How's it going guys? Past little question for step one, cardio phys. A couple people have asked about this specific question, very similar one, actually identical question on the NBME exams. So a couple people have asked about this in the past few weeks. So obviously I'm going to address it now. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, MHL, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip, 65 year old man, Cardiac exam shows a laterally displaced point of maximal impulse in the anterior auxiliary line. This just means left ventricular hypertrophy. If we have a lateralized apex beat, it can be due, due to dilatation, hypertension, myriad of etiologies, but the point is it's LVH. Three on six mid systolic murmur, AKA crescendo decrescendo crescendo that radiates to the carotids. This is going to be aortic stenosis, very buzzy pass level. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is elevated. PCWP equals left atrial pressure. Made many clips on this stuff. This just means we have left heart pathology. That's ultra high yield, okay? You have to know PCWP is increased, not just in cardiogenic shock, but in any left heart pathology. Going to cause increased pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure with transitation to the alveolar spaces. That's your mechanism for pulmonary edema. Question wants to know the most likely combination of findings uh, to see in this, to, that we would see in this patient. Let's just hop to the answer choice here. So... Lots of words we got to deal with, very verbose, okay? So let's start with stroke work, our left column here. This is going to be increased. This is going to be defined as your stroke volume multiplied by aortic pressure. Now, nothing here tells us anything about aortic pressure, but aortic stenosis implies increased afterload, okay? So we've got the stroke volume of the heart that needs to be maintained, at least initially. No evidence of overt decompensation here. Patient's not gasping for air, okay? So at least initially in aortic stenosis, we are going to have a maintained stroke volume fighting against an increased afterload. So force times distance. So the distance, the stroke volume ultimately, uh, will be the same multiplied by a greater force, okay, greater afterload. That's why our more work is done, okay? That's why our stroke uh, work is increased. So we're just going to be looking at these top five answers here. So then we go to myocardial O2 consumption. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to infer that if the myocardium has to perform more work, then therefore it's going to require O2 to do that. So we're just going to be looking at the first three answers here. Now, in terms of O2 tension, OMG, this can be the uh, seemingly confusing one, even though it's really not a big deal. This just means the O2 concentration within the myocardium itself. Okay, I mean, if you were to similarly see arteriolar O2 tension, that would just in, in theory refer to the PO2. So if we are uh, consuming more oxygen than the O2 tension, the O2 within the myocardium would be reduced. So, so far we're looking at C and D, okay, where we've got increased stroke work we need to perform, increased O2 consumption by the myocardium that's got to deal with an increased afterload. And then as a result, it's going to be using more O2. So there's less O2 left in the myocardium itself. So in terms of uh, adenosine up or down here, so adenosine is just the breakdown product of ATP. So if we're utilizing more ATP because more oxygen is going to be utilized, then we're going to have an increased adenosine concentration. That's one way to think about it. And then the other high yield point you need to know is that just simply, yes, adenosine is produced by myocardium in response to work that it performs. And it's actually the molecule not only that's responsible for cardiac pain, but that is an important autoregulator that increases uh, coronary artery blood flow. Okay, that's also a lengthy discussion. But if they tell you that, uh, for example, norepinephrine is administered, and then there's a transient decrease in coronary blood flow, but then it increases after and they say what's going on here, and the student's not really sure, answer is just increase the denosine. Okay, that also shows up on the NVMe exams. So our answer is choice C, increased stroke work, increased myocardial O2 consumption, decreased myocardial O2 tension, increased adenosine concentration. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.